Hey, what's up, guys? This is Alan with Sonic Electronics. Ugh. Hey, what's up, guys? This is Alan with Sonic Electronics, and welcome back to another episode of Car Audio Q and A. And uh, we got two questions uh, to answer today. They're both on the topic of speakers. Uh, one of the questions uh, that we'll start with is: uh, My door speakers have a whining noise. All the wires are separate from the power and ground and remote. He says one day the noise is on the left side of the car and one day the noise is on the right side of the vehicle. Um, why? Um, I did go back when we chose this question, kind of look through some of the other YouTube users' comments and they did give you some, some good advice. I would kind of be along the same lines and definitely recommend checking, you know, your RCAs, um, just, you know, unplug. You just really gotta eliminate, you know, process of elimination, check your grounds check your RCAs. I did notice in the comments you did say that one of your RCAs was uh, like a low budget RCA. The other one was like a higher quality NVX RCA. So you could have one bad RCA. Also, um, I, I don't know, you didn't state, but I don't know if you're having noise on the front and the back. Um, you also could switch your RCAs from front to back um, and see if that eliminates anything. Uh, noise filters are an option, but like another user said, there's just kind of a band-aid on the problem. Um, just basically check all your connections. I mean, you could potentially have a problem with your radio, um, even possibly your amplifier, but you just gotta kinda narrow it down um, with a meter, check grounds, etc. Also, another thing too is even though you did run your power wire um, on the opposite sides of the RCAs is what it sounds like, some vehicles, the battery might be located in the back and they have power wire running through the front on the other side, and so sometimes you running those RCAs from your heading it to wherever your amp is, they still could be running along some pretty hefty factory power wires that could be inducing the noise as well too. So it's definitely good to check that. And lastly, I would probably suggest checking the ground on your battery. So now we're moving on to the second question. And obviously, uh, obviously I hope that that helped answer uh, something for you. And hopefully you can uh, go through some of those tips and figure out your noise issue. Um, if not, post another question, let us know what you find, and uh, we'll see if we can help you out from there. Um, question two, when it comes to speakers, is it better to have them wired, it says little ohms, um, but uh, <laughs> I'm sure you mean as low as possible, possibly. Um, and that's uh, Joe John from YouTube. And um, my answer to that would be, you can if you're looking for the maximum amount of power. However, it's in my opinion that I would recommend um, not going as low as you possibly can because every time you drop your impedance from four ohms to two ohms to one ohm, etc., it doesn't matter if it's a four channel that's running your mids and highs or a sub amp, you definitely are becoming less efficient as you drop the impedance. Not only that, but there's something called dampening factor. And I know people argue about this back and forth all the time that it does matter, it doesn't matter. But the dampening factor on your amplifier drops every time you drop the impedance as well. And the dampening factor is the ability for the amplifier to control that speaker. So it doesn't matter if it's controlling a woofer or a mid or what the case may be, the lower the dampening factor, the less control the amplifier has on the speaker. So, you know, um, I kind of personally like the 2 ohm or 4 ohm impedance. Uh, obviously, if you just kind of need big, big power and you're kind of not going for something efficient, and, or if you just have a crap ton of batteries and you know a high output alternator where you know you can feed your amplifier the proper amount of amperage and voltage, you know that might be one thing. But for more sound quality, I kind of personally like sticking with a 4 ohm or a 2 ohm load. Um, but uh, you know, obviously there's big amplifiers out there where you, know, you wanna get all the power out of it and a lot of them put out their max power at one ohm. So the other option you have as well is buy an amplifier that's slightly larger and you can run it at the two ohm or four ohm impedance and not have to drop it down to one ohm. Cause as you drop it too, another thing to consider is everything gets hotter, it's pulling more current. I mean, it's just, it taxes your electrical system. So um, hope that answers your question. If you have any further ones, just definitely post. Uh, make sure all you guys subscribe. Hopefully these videos, you know, as we're doing them are quite informational. Uh, that's the whole goal here, obviously, is to help. Um, but uh, make sure you subscribe and uh, we'll see you next time.